Hello everyone. In this session, we'll be discussing about the last topic of the chapter organizing, which is centralization and decentralization. Now, starting with the first topic, which is delegation of authority. Now, what does delegation of authority means? See, as we know, in every organization, a manager is assigned a lot of work, and we know a single person cannot perform all the work. So the manager divides the work among different individual working under him according to the qualification. Now, after assigning the work to the different individual, the manager shares some of his responsibilities with his subordinates. After sharing the responsibilities with his subordinates, the manager also shares some of his authority. Authority means power to make decision with his subordinates. So sharing the authorities with subordinates. Uh, is done to make sure that the responsibility is being carrying on properly. Now, this whole process is done so that the work can be carried on effectively and efficiently. So we can say this whole process is delegation of authority. Now, delegation of authority is a process of entrusting responsibilities and authorities. to the subordinates and creating accountabilities on those employees who are entrusted responsibility and authority or in simple words we can say delegation is the process of transfer downward transfer of authority from superior to subordinate now next is principle of absoluteness of accountability so delegation is a very important process to carry on the work systematically in the organization but delegation is not a process of abdication abdication means where accountability is absolute it can never be passed or delegated after creating accountability on subordinates the superior also remain accountable for example if a sales manager has been assigned a target of selling 1000 units in one month now he divides this target among the five salesmen working under him now if one salesman fails sick then at the end of the month only 800 units will be sold so in this situation accountability lies with the sales manager he has to check whether the work is being done properly on time and then he should take timely action so here accountability is very important with the sales manager it doesn't matter whether he has delegated the target or delegated the responsibilities to his subordinates he cannot get rid of his accountability so that is why principle of absolute accountability is important in delegation of authority now next is the elements of delegation or process of delegation so the first element of delegation is responsibility so responsibility means the work assigned to an individual it includes all the physical and mental activities to be performed by the employees at a particular job position so the delegation process starts with the responsibility where the manager shares the responsibility to his subordinates which means responsibility can be delegated so some features of responsibility are responsibility is the obligation of a subordinate to properly perform the assigned duty second is it arises from superior subordinate relationship because subordinate is bound to perform the duty assigned by his superior third is responsibility flows upward because subordinate will always be responsible to his superior next element is authority so authority means power to take decision to carry on the responsibilities every employee need to have some authority so when managers are passing their responsibilities to the subordinates they also pass some of the authority to the subordinate so the second process of delegation is authority while passing the authority to the subordinate the manager should keep in mind that authority matching to the responsibility should be uh, should be passed to the subordinate which means authority should be equal to the responsibility the manager should not pass all of his authority now some features of authority are first is in a formal organization authority arise or originate from an individual's position 
Second is authority refers to right to take decision due to your managerial position. Third is authority determines superior subordinate relationship. A subordinate communicates his decision to subordinate expecting compliance from him as per his directions. Fourth is authority is restricted by law and rules and regulation of the organization. Fifth is authority arises from the scalar chain which link various job position. Sixth is authority flows downward from superior to subordinate. As responsibilities flows upward from subordinate to superior, authority flows downward from superior to subordinate. Seventh is authority must be equal to responsibility. So authority is equal to responsibility. Now the third element is accountability. So accountability means to make sure that the employees or subordinates perform their responsibilities in their expected manner. The accountability is created. So accountability means subordinates will be answerable for the non-completion of the task. Creating accountability is the third and final step of delegation process. So accountability is the third step of delegation process. Accountability cannot be delegated. It can only be shared with the subordinates where after delegating the responsibility and authority, manager is accountable for the non-completion of task. This is accountability. Features of accountability are First is accountability refers to answerable for the final output. It cannot be delegated or passed. It enforced through regular feedback on the extent of work accomplished. It flows upward that is subordinate will be accountable to his superior. Here are some importance of delegation. So first importance is effective management. In the delegation process, managers pass routine work to the subordinates. Main job of manager is to get the work done effectively and by delegating the authorities and responsibilities, manager can get the work done effectively and efficiently from the subordinates. So the manager's role is to just delegate the authority matching to the responsibility so that all the work performed by the subordinates is effective and efficient. Next is employees development. As a result of delegation, employees get more opportunities to utilize their talents. It allows them to develop those skills which help them to perform complex tasks. So basically, managers give the chance to the subordinate to use their skills to gain the experience of the work of high level job position. Next is motivation of employees. So in the delegation, when the manager is sharing his responsibilities and authority with the subordinates, it motivates the subordinate as they develop the feeling of belongingness and trust which is shown to them by their superior. So as we know in delegation, manager gives the chance to the employees to gain the experience of high level jobs and also to use their skills. So sometimes the employees are also motivated by such kind of non-financial incentives next is facilitates organizational growth in the process of delegation when the managers are passing their responsibility and authority to the subordinates they keep in mind the qualification and capability of all the subordinates so this process leads to the division of work and specialization which is very important for any organizational growth next is basis of management hierarchy so delegation establishes superior subordinate relationship which is the base for hierarchy of managers. Hierarchy of managers means where the sub superior knows that which subordinate will report to whom and the power at each job position forms the management hierarchy. Next is better coordination. In delegation Systematically, responsibility and authority is divided and employees are made answerable for non-completion of tasks. So, in delegation of authority and responsibility, it is clear that which employee has been assigned which job due to which there is no duplication of work and it leads to the better coordination. And the last is 
reduces the workload of managers in the process of delegation the managers are allowed to share the responsibilities and work with the subordinates which help the manager to reduce their workload so when the manager delegates the authority and responsibilities to their subordinate it helps in reducing the workload of managers now next topic is centralization and decentralization so centralization refers to the concentration of power or authority in few hands that is top level management which means in centralization the decision making power is with the top level management and centralization policy is basically followed in small scale organization second is decentralization decentralization can be defined as even and systematic distribution of authority at every level of management which means there is a distribution of authority at top level management middle level management and lower level management under decentralization every employees working at different level gets some share in the authority decentralization is a policy matter and managers plan in advance whether to go for centralized or decentralized policy so decentralization is basically followed in a large scale organization where there are number of workers working in an organization here are some features of decentralization first is decentralization is much more than a mere transfer of authority to lower level it implies selective dispersal of authority it shows the belief that the people are competent capable and resourceful and decentralization indicates that employees at middle and lower level can assume the responsibilities for effective impl implementation of their decision now here are some importance of decentralization first importance is develop initiative among subordinates passing of authority at middle and lower level so it shows the trust and faith of top level in their subordinates and this trust and faith motivate the employees working at different level as they are allowed to take decisions without seeking the approval of superiors so by this employees get motivated this is a kind of non financial incentives here the employees working at middle and lower level gets the chance to use their skills and they get the experience in the job at high level position next is develop managerial talent for future so in the decentralization managers working at lower and middle level also learn the art of making decision they get the experience of performing activities of top executives and learn to manage the authority given to them so with this when whenever there is a vacant of job position at top level management the managers working at middle level and lower level can be promoted this helps the managerial talent for future next is quick decision making in the decentralization process the decision making is not restricted in few hands only but decision making power is entrusted to all the managers who are taking actions or performing the activities because in decentralization there is the distribution of power of authority next is relief to top level management as we know in the process of decentralization where the power of authority is distributed at every level top level managers are not overburdened with responsibilities and authority as the systematically passes the authority and responsibilities at different levels of management and they become free to concentrate on core and important issues next is facilitates growth so decentralization grants more autonomy or freedom to lower level this helps the subordinates to do the work in the manner best suited for their department so when each department is working well then the productivity increases and when the productivity increases revenue is generated with this revenue it can be used for the expansion of business which facilitates the growth of the business and the last importance is better control so in decentralization the employees working at different levels take their own decisions and they are personally accountable for the decision they cannot pass the blame to their superior so this leads to the better control of the organization so with this we have completed the fifth chapter of business studies which is organizing 
In the next session, we'll continue with the new chapter. That's all for today. Thank you.